Maize Crop and Guide for our nutrient management and best agronomic practices. For our nutrient stewardship is a framework developed to communicate the right way to ensure sustainable and efficient use of fertilizer based on four principles namely applying the right source of fertilizers at the right rate at the right time and in the right place effective fertilizer use as guided by for our nutrient stewardship is important for developing sustainable cropping systems that support improved food production, increased income for farmers, and enhancement and maintenance of soil fertility. More and better quality maize can be produced with fertilizers. The fertility of soils which has been largely overexploited can also be restored with fertilizers. Correct management of fertilizers based on the four R's can therefore result in better social, economic and environmental outcomes for farms, villages, communities and entire countries in Africa. Right source refers to applying the correct fertilizer that provides crops with the nutrients required for good growth and high yields. Different crops have different nutrient requirements. Different fertilizers also provide nutrients in different proportions. Matching the crop's nutrient uptake requirements with the fertilizer that supplies the right mix and proportions of required nutrients ensures that the right source is achieved. Right rate refers to supplying growing plants with the right amount of nutrients for healthy growth and development. Different crops require different quantities of nutrients for healthy growth and development. The quantity of nutrients required by a particular crop also depends on current soil fertility and the crop yield target. Nutrient requirements will increase as soil fertility decreases. Similarly, as crop yields targets increase, the quantity of nutrients required to support those targets also increases. Right time refers to matching nutrients application with the timing of plant nutrient uptake. Most crops take up nutrients slowly during the early stages of growth, but the rate of nutrient uptake increases as crop develop. Fertilizer applications time to match periods of high plant nutrient uptake ensure efficient uptake of applied nutrients. Right place refers to adding nutrients to the soil at a place where the crops can easily access them. Different crops have different rooting characteristics and this is an influence on their ability to efficiently access and take up applied nutrients. The right placement of fertilizer for a particular crop should be selected to match a crop's rooting characteristics and other aspects such as planting density and tillage system. The right placement method will ensure reduced nutrient losses. Best crop management practices, coupled with the four R's, will boost crop productivity amongst farmers. The whole essence of this four R learning is to take farmers through right from land preparation to harvesting and to also take them through the best agronomic practices that will lead to getting the required yield of the maize. So we have done the maize planting and we have also taken two plus to demonstrate the use of fertilizer as against farmer practice where majority of them do not apply fertilizer. And not only fertilizer, but the right time and the right method of application of the fertilizer is what we aim at demonstrating to the farmers in this field because this is a learning field where every activity that we want to carry on will involve the farmer participation. This is the best way they can take up the technology that 4R is promoting to enhance crop yields in this district. 
Four are good agronomic practices for maize. Field selection and land preparation. Maize performs best on deep, fertile and well-drained loamy soils. For good maize yields, avoid fields that are easily flooded or rocky fields with shallow soils and avoid shady trees. Start field preparation two to three weeks before the start of the rainy season, from mid-May to early June. Before plowing and harrowing, first clear any overgrown weeds, shrubs and stumps. Plow the field uniformly to a depth of 20 to 30 centimeters after the field is cleared of shrubs and stumps. Plowing should be done when the soil moisture level is low to minimize soil compaction. After plowing, harrow the field uniformly by breaking up any large soil clots that may be present. Good plowing and harrowing practices will help to control weeds, kill some insect pests, and also make it easier to incorporate manure, apply fertilizer, and plant seeds. Seed selection and seed rate. For best maize yields, plant newly purchased certified seeds from an approved dealer instead of recycling old grain. Using certified seeds ensures good germination and high yields. Certified seeds usually contain a green tag with details on variety name, maturity period, germination percentage, and expiry date. Carefully read the instructions on the green tag to ensure that purchased seeds are suitable for your region and are not expired. Using high quality seeds that are adapted to local environment is crucial for good germination and high yields. Certified seeds can be obtained from agro input dealers such as Wumpini Agrochemicals, Garnoma, Vansado, Sasek, Antica, and Simple Prince. Where farmers have no access to new certified seeds, farmers can recycle available open pollinated varieties, into bracket OPV, from their fields such as Obatampa, Omankwa, and Abontim. However, recycled OPV seeds should not be used for more than two years. Hybrid seed varieties such as Pan 53 and Pan 12 should not be recycled and new seeds should be obtained each year. The recommended seed rate for good maize yields is about 20 to 25 kilograms per hectare. Based on the size of your farm and the recommended seed rate, acquire enough quantities of seeds in consultation with your agro dealer. We are again at Kellen Kellen to demonstrate to farmers the beneficial use of fertilizer on maize crops. So we have come with maize variety called Sanzalsima. This Sanzalsima is an OPV variety that was also released by Sari. It is high yielding and it's a medium variety. Want to introduce the maize variety to the farmers here and to also take them through the best agronomic practices that will lead to getting the required yield of the maize. For a rare dunkle amount, a clangu back with the cabo, Catania, Tolambe Lumba, for a rare one dangalati, Munkama, a Kuwaki Unco, Kanaka Muma Kunkamaya, Ekafa, a toy Munkaki in a turpa, Nkam Banko Park, a blank Kamaka Banko to Paki to Nuria. Ede ile kero pa njo tiba. E ya e ya no babu. Tje kaya kaka lekwa tofala. The four art project came to teach us how to farm the maize. Actually, even the variety that they brought to us is a good variety. Maize planting in the northern region should be done between early June and July 10 based on the onset of rains. Early maturing varieties such as doji and wandata can be planted up to the end of July. For good growth and yields, plant maize in rows using planting lines. 
The spacing between rows will depend on the maize variety to be planted. For early and medium maturing varieties, plant at a spacing of 75 cm between rows and 40 cm between plants. For late maturity varieties, plant at a spacing of 80 cm between rows and 40 cm between plants. Prepared planting holes should be about 5 cm deep, with two seeds planted per hole. Planted maize seeds should be lightly covered with soil. When you plant in lines, you are able to control your weeds as well as pests and diseases of the crops. So planting in line is helpful than just planting at random. And we also give them the right planting distance that will give them optimum crop population. And for this medium variety, which is the Sanzalsima, we use the planting distance of 75 inter rows and 40 centimeters intra row. So it is 75 by 40. And we have shown the farmers how to get these distances accurately in their farms. And this will help them to control or to keep the optimum plant population required in their farms. I'm a farmer who was planting my crop anyhow. I dibbled anyhow, I plow and the lands anyhow. But uh, from uh, 2020, as far as I just came, we learned more. And this year, the year 2021, I practiced their principles. So first of all, I plow, the tractor plow for me. But unfortunately, they have no harrow to go and harrow for me, but I use hold to broadcast it and, and measure it with the roof, uh, the garden lines. And I measure the, the principles of our art project, which is uh, 75 centimeters in between the lines, 40 centimeters in between the crop. And the mass are so, maglawana are so. So, the curve for I have a T, for I have. But then I'm more to me, Tagoque, to open up. Tatakwena, Lenya, Lucking on Yumi, Luckaboy. For our, you see, I never be brave if you're more. Not time and I, Yanka, say, I don't. You could say, What could be a bra? Nay, Dian Bassa. But O Mama, yet you say, I say, in Dian line by line. Senia, a bear, you beat me, Anna, do. Nobaka Good maize yields, fertilizer application should be based on the four hours of fertilizer management to ensure that the maize crop is supplied with the right source of fertilizer, applied at the right rate, at the right time in the growing season, and at the right place where the growing plants can easily assess nutrients supplied. The first fertilizer application is referred to as basal application and should be conducted at about 14 days after planting. This should be done when the soil is moist to enhance the dissolving of applied nutrients in the soil as this allows for faster uptake of nutrients. At this stage, the right source of fertilizer for maize are compound fertilizers that supply all primary macronutrients, namely nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Good examples in northern Ghana are NPK 15-15-15, and NPK 25-10-10. Multi-nutrient fertilizers that supply secondary macronutrients such as sulfur, calcium, and magnesium, and micronutrients such as zinc, boron, in addition to NPK, are also a good source at planting or shortly after planting. 
An example is NPK 11-22-21 plus 5 sulfur, 0.72 zinc, 0.5 boron, which additionally supplies crops with sulfur, zinc and boron. Application of multi-nutrient fertilizers that additionally supply secondary and micronutrients has been shown to give the best maize yields in northern Ghana. With the maize, the first fertilizer application is recommended to be from the second week, that is from the 14th day after planting and it shouldn't go beyond 21 days that is over the third week so just estimate your planting where you have adequate moisture for fertilizer application you apply it within the 14 to 21 days after planting days na wa yusu bottle lid nu e dia ma ube 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 bottle kru u di fertilizer nu guma na wa cover the thought us how to apply fertilizer in the right time and then at the right rate at the right place and the right source so from the one of planting up to 14 days which is 2 weeks then we apply the first application For our tip, to determine the number and quantity of nutrients supplied by a particular fertilizer, check the nutrient content as labeled on the fertilizer bag. The nutrient content of any fertilizer is usually indicated on the bag's label as a series of numbers. The first three numbers always refer to the primary nutrients, into bracket N, P, and K. If any other nutrients are present, Additional numbers are given, followed by their chemical symbols. For example, a fertilizer bag labeled 15, 20, 20, 5S, 0.5B contains 15% nitrogen, 20% phosphorus as P2O5, 20% potassium as K2O, 5% sulfur, and 0.5% boron. Right rate during first fertilizer application. For good maize yields, it's recommended to apply one and a half to three bags of selected compound or blended NPK fertilizer for each acre crop with maize. The amount of fertilizer to be applied will depend on the specific characteristics of the field where maize is being grown and on the farmer's target yield. For example, Fields that have been cultivated for a long time with minimal application of fertilizer or manure are often less fertile and require more quantities of fertilizers. Fields that have only recently been converted to farmland or usually have large quantities of manure applied are often more fertile and require lower quantities of fertilizers. Higher maize yields targets require more nutrients to be supplied, hence higher fertilizer application rates. To ensure the application of equal quantities of fertilizer at each planting stand, farmers can use locally available soda bottle tops to measure and apply equal quantities of fertilizer. Generally, one full level soda bottle top contains about 5 grams of fertilizer while a half full of soda bottle top contains about 2.5 grams of fertilizer. Right placement of fertilizer. To ensure a right placement of basal fertilizer, create small holes about five centimeters from the plant using a stick. To uniformly apply one and a half bags of fertilizer in a one acre field, apply one full bottle top next to each planting stand. 
To apply three bags of fertilizer in one acre field, apply two full bottles top next to each planting stand. After applying the fertilizer, cover it with soil to prevent loss of nutrients. So in applying the fertilizer also we were told that we should dibbling and then put the fertilizer inside then cover it because the urea is full of air. If we didn't dibble and put it inside and cover it, the, the air will take the strength away and then the sun, when the sun hits it, it will also take it away. Apply fertilizer five centimeters away from the plant. Prevents the fertilizer from contacting and damaging the plant as the fertilizer dissolves. Second fertilizer application. The second fertilizer application is referred to the top dressing and should be applied at six weeks after planting. During top dressing, maize plants require to take up nitrogen in large quantities for good growth and grain development. The right source of fertilizers at top dressing are therefore straight fertilizers that are rich in nitrogen such as urea. Urea fertilizer has round granules that are white in color. Urea contains the highest proportion of nitrogen, 46% nitrogen. In addition to urea, different fertilizer companies have developed special multi-nutrient fertilizers for top dress application in maize that are rich in nitrogen. Consult your local extension officer or fertilizer company agronomist for advice on other multi-nutrient fertilizers available in your local market for top dressing. Weed or spray the field very well before top dressing fertilizer application as weeds compete with the maize plants for nutrients. The top up or the top dressing, which is the second fertilizer application, will come six weeks after planting or four weeks after the first fertilizer application. So these are the various times that we are demonstrating to farmers. Na second fertilizer no so eh wonya six weeks a no abo second fertilizer no o ho no e be ma aburu no atimi anyi akese akese e what i have learned is how to apply fertilizer under the maize to apply you dig a hole use a cover of a bottle before you apply it after that you cover it and then the two weeks i want to apply the fertilizer which is MPK. So after three weeks, I went and weed it. And then the six weeks, I went and apply the top dressing, which is a urea. Top dressing should be done when the soil is moist to enhance the dissolving of applied nutrients in the soil, as this allows for faster uptake of nutrients. If after six weeks after planting maize, the soil is very dry, Delay the top dress fertilizer application until some rains are received. This shouldn't have been the stage of the maze that we're supposed to apply it. Mm -hmm. It should have been done six, uh, six weeks after planting. Mm -hmm. But because of uh, lack of moisture, because of the drought, we delayed the application. At this stage, it needs much nutrients, especially nitrogen, which is very, very important. Because this time it is tussling. Uh, the crop is coming. And if the crop comes, it takes a lot of uh, the nutrients. And if there's no adequate moisture, whatever nutrient we put under it, it cannot make good use of it. To ensure a right placement of fertilizer at top dressing, Make small holes about 5 cm from the plant using a stick. Use a bottle top or other small container to apply one bottle or equal amount of fertilizer next to each plant. 
and then cover it with soil. For our tip, basal fertilizer should be procured a few weeks before the planting period so as to ensure timely application when planting starts. In cases where the nutrient source is a bulk blended multi-nutrient fertilizer, the blend should be mixed thoroughly to ensure proper distribution of the granules in every fertilizer scoop. Fertilizer applications should be avoided during periods of very heavy rainfall to avoid washing away of applied nutrients. Four are tips for management of maize plants. At 10 days after planting, check for gaps along the rows and plant additional seeds to fill any gaps. After germination, protect young plants from attack by rodents and birds using local methods. Regularly scout for pest and disease infestations by walking through the farm in a zigzag pattern every week. Perforated leaves, presence of lava, egg clusters or insects on maize leaves are all indicators of pest infestation. Discolored leaves and small stunned plants may be indicators of nutrient deficiency or disease infestation. Farmers should consult local AEAs for assistance with interpreting any sign. Weeds reduce the growth and yield of maize by competing for nutrients, water and light. For best yields, maize fields should be kept weed free by conducting timely weeding at regular intervals. If weeds are actively growing in the field at planting, spray non-selective herbicides such as glyphosate or paraquat. Before applying any herbicide, carefully read and follow instructions provided by the manufacturer or consult your local AEA. Improvement of soil fertility through the application of fertilizers or manure also helps to reduce trigger infestation. Harvesting and storage. Harvesting should be done as soon as the maize crop is mature and dry. At harvesting, maize grains are usually not fully dry and have a moist content of about 15 to 20 percent. Immediately after harvesting, cobs should be dried so as to reduce the grain moisture content to about 10 to 12 percent in readiness for storage. Storing unhaxed maize is not recommended as it is very difficult to detect insect infestations. Well-dried and shelled maize should be treated with recommended storage chemicals and stored in jute sacks lined with polythene bags. Common storage chemicals include actylic 25 EC or aluminium phosphide, example, phostoxin and gastoxin. I'm Lukman Salifu, the cooperative manager for East Gonja Zone. Post management losses have been one of our major challenges. Most of our farmers, after harvesting, it becomes an issue. And then, what we do as a cooperative, what we have started doing is sensitization. We went around to sensitize them on the availability of our silo services. As you can see behind me, we have a very nice silo that we've cleaned in there, fumigated it with our palace. As a project to reduce post harvest losses on our brownfield days, we included post harvest management in the trainings where we trained all the farmers who, were partic who participated on the field days to properly dry their produce according to standard moisture required for each of the crops. After they have dried it and then they thresh it on a very clean ground either on a pasture or on, on a tapoli, they are required to mobilize the produce to the warehouse. Yo, bime, yo ma, Joshua. For Arasia, I don't know, to me, to pa at tun. To mo kwe, to pa ke ke ke, ba mo to me, yeto wa nyala kiti tine. Ba mo to me, ye ke, tia, kwe, kya ke karawa anke. Ye ke, tia blanka, kwa tete, tete, kwa wana, kde, beli chelen, kye kapu, kwa bena. Ah, kde, no kufu. Ni akuga, nama apuona, 
Bag maize should be transported to a warehouse for safe storage, kept away from the wall. Maize can be sold through farmer cooperatives for competitive prices. Consult your zonal crop managers for more information. Monies can be sent to the credit union for safekeeping. To give our farmers high value markets, we are bringing the produce together so that we can attract the higher value buyers. At this point, in many cases, farmers are suffering from the standardized weighing or selling of their produce. Some of them are selling in volumes, and even with these volumes, the bulls that they are using are not the same. The project has acquired weighing skills for the silos. Before you bring your produce in, they are weighed and standardized. You know how many kilos you have in the silo, so that when we are selling, you know how much you are collecting as a value for your produce in the warehouse. We negotiated with some uh, high value buyers and they told us that most of the times the challenges they have with our produce or most of our farmers produce is that uh, the produce are not of good quality. So we engaged the farmers, told them that whenever you harvest, you have to make sure that you trash it, then clean it well before we store it. After store it, then we now engage the buyers, the high value buyers to come and inspect the produce before we now do it, sell it to them. So currently we are embarking on uh, produce aggregation. We've aggregated some in our silo, but the exercise is still in progress. What we aim at is to run these cooperatives even after for our project. Whether the for our project go or they are still with us, I will never go back to the practice I used to practice for the years. I will continue to practice for our project principles. Because it is it is helpful.